Welcome back, caring viewers, to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. We are speaking with Dr. John Brandenburg, a brilliant U.S. physicist who is sharing with us his research regarding Martian history and its significance to humanity. How long, based on your research, has Mars had an Earth-like environment? Uh, probably up until about half a billion years ago. Wow. Now that sounds like a long time mm -hmm. in earthly uh, terms, uh, or at least human terms. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, that is most of the geologic age of the Earth. The Earth is four and a half billion years old. Mars is similar age. And uh, the solar system formed four and a half billion years ago. So this means almost all of Mars history, it had an ocean and conditions suitable for life on Earth. Dr. Brandenburg theorizes that the habitable atmosphere on Mars disappeared following an asteroid impacting the planet. Mars basically flash froze in a day, a day or so almost all the living things on Mars perished. So do you think that life currently exists on Mars? Oh uh, yes, we would find uh, rather primitive uh, organisms that could survive under very harsh conditions. Okay. They would have, the, the primitive bacteria uh, would have survived this catastrophe and uh, managed to hang on to uh, little ecological niches on Mars. A hot spring here, um, uh, buried organic debris, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like coal uh, deposits of uh, old organic matter that they could still eat. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, evidence for this is large amounts of methane are coming out of parts of Mars surface. And uh, this is probably from old uh, ocean sediments being digested by bacteria. This happens on Earth in mm -hmm. swamps. So, <clears throat> you wrote about your perspective of indigenous and intelligent life on Mars. Will you elaborate on that and, and explain how and why research findings about Mars make a profound statement about the present and future welfare of the Earth? The human race should be careful mm -hmm. uh, about what it did to this planet, that mm -hmm. we should um, we should tend and nurture this planet rather than just riding roughshod over it. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be careful how we altered the uh, balance of life on this planet by dumping all this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere mm -hmm. and uh, uh, other things that we are doing. Uh, also, it made us aware that you, we are part of the cosmos. We can't turn our backs on it and hope it will leave us alone. The cosmos will reach out and touch you. It used to be the world was the earth to the human race. Mm -hmm. The world is no longer the earth. The world is the cosmos that we live in. Mm -hmm. We must understand the cosmos. We must go out and explore it, find out who our neighbors are, get to know them, etc. By the way, the, the Cydonian hypothesis was basically a hypothesis that life and intelligence were to be found everywhere throughout the universe. If you go to the first planet in the universe that's Earth-like and you can explore it and you find liquid water, which means almost definitely there had to be life there, that not only finding uh, conditions for life, but conditions for long-term life where you could have evolution and, in fact, intelligence, mm -hmm. then you must imagine that the cosmos is full of planets like Earth was people on. In 1976, the U.S. spacecraft Viking Orbiter 1 recorded images of Mars. One image taken has astounded many astronomers, cosmologists, and other scientists, a likeness of the human face on the planet's surface. What's even more amazing is that later additional faces were found in other regions of Mars. The face on Mars, since it looked humanoid, some people immediately said, well, that can't be uh, a sign of intelligence. We must, it must be a trick of lighting because <laughs> anyone on another planet wouldn't look like us. They'd look like something else. And um, I, I find that 
reasoning kind of nonsensical um, because we look like the way we do for perfectly reasonable reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I just thought that um, we should investigate. And uh, we then published the results of our investigation, and the, the public's imagination was captured. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, we published this hypothesis, and uh, in my opinion, the evidence uh, that has been coming in, including new pictures, have tended to support the hypothesis. Can you comment on more recent research findings on Mars based on NASA's and European Space Agency's new data? They're finding that uh, Mars not only had uh, an ocean, but apparently had uh, oxygen, was highly oxidizing. They'll, they'll say it was highly oxidizing there, meaning there's lots of oxygen. That's why Mars is red. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to even have liquid water there, they had to have had a uh, rather dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide to trap a lot of heat. Carbon mm -hmm. dioxide and methane in addition to oxygen. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're finding um, lots of evidence to support the, uh, the new Mars synthesis, which is just the basic statement about Mars climate being Earth-like for a long period. Since that's 90% of the Cydonian hypothesis, the Cydonian hypothesis is being also reinforced. Our respectful appreciation goes to Dr. John Brandenburg for giving us insight into his research on the history of Mars. Please join us again next Monday on Science and Spirituality for part two of our interview with this highly knowledgeable physicist. Dead Mars Dying Earth is available at www.amazon.com. Interested viewers, thank you for your company on today's program. Words of Wisdom is next, following noteworthy news. May we learn wisely from the fate of our neighboring planets and become better stewards of our precious Earth. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss. <laughs>